I'm joined on this special edition of Locked on Sun Devils by Sun Devil Safety, Xavion Alford. You are Locked on Sun Devils, your daily podcast on the Arizona State Sun Devils. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to the Locked On Sun Devils podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Richie Bradshaw, and I will be your guide for everything Arizona State Sun Devils. Shout out to my everydayers who are here every day, and thanks for making us your first listen of the day. Wherever you're getting your podcast, hit like, subscribe, turn on notifications so you get an update whenever we post new content. You can follow me on Twitter at RichieBrads36, the podcast at LO underscore Sun Devils. Today's episode is brought to you by GameTime. Download the GameTime app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONCALLS for $20 off of your first purchase. Terms and conditions apply. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. And today we have a very special guest. We have Arizona State Safety Xavion Alford joining us. We have got a lot to talk about. Uh, Xavion, first of all, I appreciate you carving out a little bit of time for us to uh, sit down and talk today. No, no problem. No problem. Always uh, love to come on, come on, come conversate a little bit, you know. I love the chain, especially with uh, your uh, Twitter handle. Yeah. Uh, 100 yard landlord. That's, yeah, that's outstanding. Yeah. So, yeah. oh, go ahead. Now, I was going to say, definitely something that I always wanted uh, since I kind of came up with the whole, you know, 100 yard landlord thing. So, always, always wanted to uh, go ahead and grab this. So, it, it was good. It was good. Good feeling. It's looking good, my friend. Mm-hmm. So, a little off topic before we get into the actual uh, conversation. What is the longest interception you've ever had, whether it's college, high school, peewee? Uh. I would say the longest has probably was probably in the state championship. Actually, my junior year of mm-hmm. high school, uh, we played against Prince, played against Prince Dorba, Highland Park, in uh in AT and T. Uh, and oh wow, I, they was they were backed up like probably like on the ten or twelve yard line. I caught like a pretty deep one hand interception. I returned it to about like the, I wish I would have. I wish it would have been the pick six, but. I returned it probably to about like the eight to like 10 yard line. But I also had like a 40 yard pick six um, uh, against Texas City as well. So, but I would say that one will probably be the longest because obviously it was in, it was in a big moment, big light stage. And I kind of had a long ways to run back. So, yep. Is that your favorite one of uh, probably the interception you've had? Yeah, I'll probably say that's my favorite. That's my favorite one, definitely. Well, we're going to get you that 100-yard pick six this year. I'm absolutely manifesting it for you. But where I want to start the conversation is, unfortunately, last year, you and Jake Smith were ruled ineligible for the two-time transfer policy. So I'm curious, in that time frame, what are some of the things that you've been working on behind the scenes? Um, I would say I was lifting every single day, uh, working on my body, um, obviously mentally, um, trying to develop too, obviously, I, I, as I could watch it, get a lot of mental reps. Um, I would say that that was those two areas were probably the most, and just uh, being a good, a better teammate also. That, that's another um, area I would say that I was able to grow in and uh, that I really focused on during that time, kind of just waiting my time and, you know, just putting in the work, daily hours um, in the dark. So when, when everything comes to light, it'll be what it's supposed to be. I assume with uh, what you were saying about uh, working with your teammates and everything, are you embracing a big time leadership role? There's obviously going to be a few holes to step up for Uh, Jordan Clark, no longer with the team. He was one of the more vocal leaders of the team. Is that something that's been uh, placed on you or something that you're just willing to step into? Um, I wouldn't say that it's kind of been placed on me, but I would say my whole life, every team that I've been on, it's kind of just na- I've naturally just flown into that role. I've always been a very vocal guy. I always want to express myself to other people uh, to show that I care about them and how passionate I am about football as well. So that's definitely been something that I've been focusing on, trying to uh, kind of be that that voice for the team just to get us going, uh, just to ke- and, and keep us up high and uh 
when we're low, just keep us up too. The same thing it, through the ups and downs. Kind of just be the same, get, be that guy to be encouraging and, and and help as much as I can. Obviously, with the um, adversity that I've been through and, and things that I've been through in college, all the different places, seen a lot, uh, been different places. Not that I know it all, but um, just wherever I feel like I can help, uh, I'm willing to help. Seen it all and done it all, and obviously there was a lot of time for you to reflect on everything, uh, see how see how this season's kind of come into light for you. What's what was your adversity kind of looking like? How how were you able to get yourself through what was very frustrating for you to not have that season to play? Um, ultimately, I would say my faith got stronger. Uh, I definitely developed a closer relationship with God um, and my mom, who's like my rock uh, and my family. Uh, they stuck by me like they've always done through everything. And they, they know what I'm capable of and what I can do. So them just keeping me keeping me mentally motivated and engaged in my teammates and in my team and what was going on that prior year. So uh, obviously this year when I'm let free, all that energy and all that passion and uh, positivity and everything I kept could uh, show, uh, be shown as well. And uh, everything that, that I've uh, went through basically, um, on the good side, it, it'll come back to me. So um, just staying focused, you know, staying locked in, just uh, remembering about the ultimate goal and the long end of uh, of why I do this and my purpose of why I do this. And uh, that's what I would say, really. What all are you looking forward to now that you're back on the field? We saw, so during spring ball last year and when you were able to play in training camp and everything, you were someone that grabbed a lot of people's attention, not just myself, there was a lot of people in the Sun Devils media that were like, hey, Xavion Z- uh, Alford is making a lot of plays right now. Mm-hmm. Now that you're back on the field and that we know that you're going to be able to play this year, what have, what are the things you're most excited about? Uh, I'm really just excited about uh, just being able to run out the tunnel and be free and know that uh, whoever's on the other side, I get to actually put, put all the hard years of work, um, everything that I've been – you know, focusing on working on with my teammates. And uh, it, it's just going to be good just to get out there and be a kid again. I've been playing this game since I was four years old. And uh, it's it's been it's my true love. Uh, I've always loved this game. So just being being able to step foot on the grass and be able to do it again for real this time is going to be uh, it's gonna be really big for me. But obviously just all the plays that I've made that you guys have seen and stuff like that, uh, to actually go do it on Saturdays when it counts for my school, uh, the school that gave me a chance, the school that, you know, uh, took me in, even though I sat out a year and everything, just to be able to repay Coach Dillingham and, and all the coaches and it, the whole Sun Devil uh, Nation. That That's that's going to be the biggest thing for me. What was that support like that you got from the coaches, whether it was Coach Dillingham or Coach Carrington or Coach Ward or anybody else that was lifting you up during that time? Um, I couldn't really put it on a scale, to be honest, because uh, the, the tremendous – amount of support that I had throughout that difficult year. I'm obviously going to a new environment, going to a new place, being ready to do something and get out there with your new team and then not being able to is hard. But uh, they stuck by, even my teammates, they they stuck by me the whole way and kept me motivated, kept me locked in, you know, kept my kept my uh, my emotions high. And uh, and I, I just thank them for that. I, I can really, I can't even put it into words because uh, they don't know what that did for me. Uh, as a person, just to see that it's people out there that really want to see you win, uh, regardless of how long they've met you or how long they've known you, that people genuinely want to see you win, and I want to do the same. So it's just one big family here, and this probably this is the best decision I've made in my life so far. That is so cool to hear. As someone who grew up being a Sun Devil fan and everything, knowing that the university reflects that way for you too is you know just totally cool for me and everybody else to yeah. – to see how much you love this program and to see that the program lifted you up too. Yeah. So real quick, before we get into the second part of the show, I do want to ask you with the year off, is it wash your hands, move on, don't worry about it. Or is this like a chip on your shoulder as you head into the year? Um, It's a little bit of both. I would say, uh, this is the time, the time I would say where, uh, where it's kind of a chip on my shoulder is right now. It's summertime where it's where it's hot outside and 
it's, it's grinding days, you know. Um, I got a degree from from this wonderful university. So being being kind of done with school, uh, I've had a lot of time, free time. So I, I just tweeted today, too. They tried to take a lot of time from me, so I've been putting in a lot of extra time. So There you go. Like, that's, that's literally – and that's literally what – this summer is for me. I've been trying to find ways to stay in the facility as long as I can. And even when I'm at home, trying to find stuff to do that, whether it's taking care of my body or watching film or uh, just, just sitting back visualizing on what the season is going to look like and what it's going to look like for me. Um, I would say that's the time where I have a chip on my shoulder. And then every day I wake up after I kind of wash it off. I kind of just, you know, it's just, it is what it is. It happened, but I, I use it as motivation to get up and fuel me every day. There's nothing more dangerous than somebody who's got that motivation. Let's go ahead and transition into the second part of the show. Now we're going to talk about the fact on, or the the fact, the thoughts on you returning to the same defense. We'll hop into that in just a moment. This is the Locked On Sun Devils podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I want to talk to you guys about our friends over at Game Time because Game Time is making it easy to get the NBA Finals tickets faster and easier because on Game Time, the prices will actually go down the closer it gets to tip off with killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, plus the lowest price guarantee. Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying NBA tickets. Those last minute tickets, you can save up to 60% off buying last minute tickets for sports concerts, comedy, theater, and anything else you can find. You can save even more with exclusive in-app deals on select seats ahead of the game or event, or you can try the zone deals where you pick the section and game time chooses the seats. You can toggle a feature for all in pricing that'll show you the total up front with no surprise fees at checkout. You can even get a panoramic view of your seat in the app before you buy so you know what to expect when you arrive. And the best part, of course, is their lowest price guarantee, which will credit you 110% of the difference if you find tickets in the same section and row for less. And of course, your purchase is covered with the most flexible customer service policy in the ticketing industry. Take the guesswork out of buying NBA Finals tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply again. Create an account, redeem code locked on college for $20 off your first purchase. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Back into our sit down here with Xavion Alford. My friend, we are going to transition now and talk about your thoughts on returning to this defense, the thoughts on kind of the moving pieces and the youngsters and the veterans that have come in. We'll start nice and simple. How does it feel to be back into the same defense with Brian Ward and Brian Carrington returning? Uh, it's great. Um, obviously, the foundation was laid the first year. When I was here, obviously, I was able to catch a good grasp of the scheme, obviously going through spring ball and fall camp and just going through installs and stuff like that throughout the year. And then watching my teammates go through the reps with the calls that we were calling and stuff like that. Uh, it's just good just to be able to get a lot of mental reps. And I really feel like, uh, this time it slowed down. It slowed down a lot to me because I I kind of knew what to do. I could, and that's really my thing. Once I understand, I'm able to uh, vocally like tell people also like what, what's supposed to be going on and how things are supposed to be. So just being uh, in the scheme for that second year with Coach Ward, who's a great coach who breaks everything that everything down to the smallest detail. Uh, that's what I really love about him. He's big on the details, uh, and and Coach Carrington. Um, it, it's been good. So I'm, I'm ready to uh, obviously sharpen it up here in this summer and fall and fall camp and get ready to put it on display. What are some of the things that you've been challenged to work on by Coach Carrington? Any any kind of the mechanical stuff that goes into the position? Um, I would just say really everything. And for me, a guy that's like kind of been in uh, different playbooks and stuff like that, uh, just cleaning up like the, the footwork in certain in certain when I'm in certain situations, really just cleaning up small footwork, small key indicators and details that uh, give me a heads up on the play to be put me in the right position to make the play. So um, I feel like the little really, really small things, the really small details, those were something that we harped on in year one. But coming back year two is it's definitely like it's, it's, it's way more of a big picture when it comes to, uh, to those little things. 
looking at the depth at safety, as you know, there's a lot of talented guys back there. You're one of them. There's a lot of new faces too. Uh, Miles Ghost Rouser is coming in. Kamari Wilson is coming in. Yep. What do those guys bring to the table? And how's your experience been working with them? Uh, my experience has been great. They both um, gelled in like just like nothing really, like like just one big family. The DB room, the safety room is very close. Uh, we all talk, work with each other all the time. We all want to see each other get better. So uh, those two guys, Miles and, and Kamar, they're both really good football players. can tell that they play football. Uh, they both pick up pick up things well, learn things well, and they're both talented. Like you said, like we have talented people in the room. So just knowing that uh, obviously breeds builds competition, but obviously we all know that – uh, each other is talented so you might take something from each some somebody else's game or something like that we're kind of just bouncing off each other really that and, and making each other better as a room so ultimately on saturdays the safeties as a whole we can get the job done and i like that you brought up being able to play off of each other what are some of the what are some of the strengths that they have themselves whether it's uh kamari being able to do x y or z or ghost being able to do his own thing what are some of the strengths that they have that play really well to your own strengths? I would say versatility because versatility is something that I've uh, always prided myself in having, being able to do different things, be able to come down on a box, be able to uh, cover cover tight ends, cover receivers, uh, play deep in the post, rush the uh, passer, being able to put all those things in my game and, and being versatile. I think those guys are versatile. Like you can put them in different positions and, and uh, they can thrive there. So I feel like with those two, those are a, a really big thing I've, I've witnessed over spring ball and the time that they've been here. Having Shamari Simmons back, one of the, one of the veteran guys, he's been around a long time, whether it was at Austin P or now at Arizona state, You've gotten to build a little bit of a connection with him. What are your expectations for you guys potentially being two of the most important players on the defense right now? Uh, my expectations for us is just be ourselves and just to, to make each other better. Um, obviously, he's a guy that played last year and, is, and, and has played in his career. Uh, and, Sh and Shamari is a very smart player. So, trying to take things from him, him trying to take things from me, like I said, bouncing it off each other and really holding each other to a standard and accountable of let's really push each other to be the best possible players that we can be, whether that's taking a little small step and correcting it and going back and correcting it or uh, focusing in on this in the film room and going back and correcting that. Just the little things really that's going to separate us when we uh, get to the fall. Um, I would say that's probably the thing that we've been uh, working on. How do the youngsters look? There's there's obviously a lot of redshirt freshmen. There's some true freshmen coming in. How are how are you looking at these guys, knowing that you're a veteran on the team and they're going to be looking up to you? What do you think of them? Um, I think they're really talented guys, and they really have a lot of potential and have a lot of upside. Um, re regardless of all the guys, really is Montana Moore or Keith Abney, all these all these guys, second year guys that were here for last year and that's here. Um, They've all taken a big jump from where I seen where they were. And even the guys, the new younger guys that came in, such as Cole and things like that, like they've definitely uh caught my eye. And they it's not I went once you get in college, the age thing kinda is there, but it kinda kinda goes away. It's kind of just everybody in the room is really serious and, and and really has a passion about football. So when you're around guys like that, it makes it easier for you to be passionate and do your job and want to be great. Well, because we're all pushing each other. We're all around each other every day, uh, winter, spring, summer, just grinding to, to ultimately reach the ultimate goal in, in the fall and it's to be the best team we could be and, and to win. Do they view you as one of the big uh, veterans on the team, like they come to you for like all the questions and everything like that? Uh, I, yeah, I was, I would say, yeah, I don't want to be the guy be like, oh, they all come to me and stuff like sure. that. Uh, just obviously being, like I said, being a different – universities, being in different defensive playbooks, being in different situations uh, in the game and practice, uh, they definitely come to me and ask, and I'm willing to tell. Like I said, anybody willing to help me, I'm willing to help them and, and vice versa. So uh, just to see them to be, like I said, those guys are really asking questions and trying and f trying to figure out why is this that and why is this that. Uh, that just goes to show me that they're really locked in and, and the details really matter. And that's what, like I said, 
what we've been focusing on as a team, really just the small things that can put us in position to win. That's what we're trying to focus on. What's that like for you to kind of turn into the big time veteran on the team and like the, the young guys go, Oh, I gotta, I gotta talk to Xavion. He knows exactly what we're doing, what we're looking at and everything. What's it like to become that person? Um, I really don't know, to be honest. I would just say that I just be myself. I just say, like I said, I've always been a guy that people just kind of uh, gravitate to, and I like I will gra- I gravitate to them as well. And uh, it, I mean, it feels good like that, to knowing that the younger guys look up to you. That and that means that I'm doing something right. Obviously, the way that I go about the process, wake up every day, attack workouts, meetings, everything. That means that I'm doing something right. But it also gives me that that not kind of pressure, but that people are watching and people are, when you, when you speak, people are listening. So whenever you do something, it needs to be the right way and not the wrong way. Sounds good to me. Sounds uh very well thought out. Very, uh very well spoken. We're going to transition into the last part of the podcast here in just a moment. We're going to talk about some goals that you have for yourself, for the team and a few other things as well. We'll hop into it right now. This is the Lockdown Sunnables podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. One more time, I appreciate you guys for tuning in and making us your first listen of the day. And a shout out to my everydayers who are here every day. Xavion, as we round out this show, it's time to ask the fun stuff. (laughs) What are your own personal expectations? Do you want 40 interceptions? you want 200 tackles? What are we shooting for here? I mean, those numbers would be awesome. Those (laughs) numbers would be very good. But, uh, no, my personal goals really is – just to have the best season I've had in my life so far. That's that's my goal. And obviously, I've been playing football since I was four years old. So in the, that many years until now, to our 22 year old Xavier, I want to be able to uh, look at look at everything I went through and be like that all fueled me to have the best season of my life. So like I said, I don't know what that's going to look like. Um, and I'm, I'm really right now. I'm just focusing on the day to day, just staying in the moment, trying to grind every day and find something to work on, find something to get better. So ultimately, when the lights, when the lights show on, that I'm all this time that and all this, this everything that's been built up, I'm, I'm, I'm ready for it. Is there any specific number you have in mind for any turnovers or anything like that? I know a lot of guys will put a sticky note on their locker and it says. I want X amount of touchdowns or turnovers or sacks or anything like that. Is there any number that you look at and you go, that's my goal? Uh, the number I would say for turnovers, I would just say a lot. That, that That's that's the number that I would say. I would just Perfect. say, I would just, yeah, I would just say a lot. I would, I would really, uh, that's something I've implemented into my game since I started playing defensive back. Um, obviously it's, it's a very hard position, but I wanted something to stand out about me and my game when I played and uh, it, it was getting the ball, having a knack for the ball. So um, uh, a lot of turnovers to be expected uh, in this waiting period up until now coming the fall. We'll definitely take whatever you can give us, whether that's five or 10 or the 40 that we talked about. Yeah. What, what are the expectations you have for this team and for this unit yourself? This was, this is a Sun Devils defense that was so much better than what the numbers showed in the box score. This was a this was a team that flew to the football. They played aggressive. And even if the numbers said you gave up X amount of yards, we could tell when we were watching the team that this is a motivated group. Now in year two with Coach Ward, in year two with you back on the field, what are your expectations for the group? Uh, my expectations is just be better, to be better each and every day. Each and every day that we play defense to get better, whether that's practice up until the game, that every day that goes on is, is, is to be better. And to really obviously play fast, physical, and run to the ball. And, and uh, really to – when people play against us, to really remember, like, after the game, like, man, like, that defense, they brought it all four quarters, like, the whole time. Like, no matter what the situation was – Big play, not big play, turnover, not a turnover. That every snap that we took, we played the exact same we did from the first quarter to the first, uh, fourth quarter. How do you feel about year two of Coach Dillingham? It's obviously a very exciting time for ASU fans with all the all the 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 movement with the NIL and the team that's just 
getting better day in and day out. How's it feel to be a part of year two of Kenny Dillingham where, you know, they're activating the Valley? I'll say it's exciting. And I'll say I'm excited for Coach Dillingham also because all the new faces um, since I've got here, uh, staff members, everybody that's came in, all the new people. This is a different culture around here than it was last year. Like it's just different in the building, and uh, everybody, everybody can feel it, and it's some everybody can feel it. Even from the workouts and, and the work that we're putting in, even the dudes who are coming in, they embracing our culture and fitting right into it. And I would just say it's just a whole new energy around here. So uh, it, when when you get that energy where everybody in the building is on the same page, and you go out in the, in the world against. Whoever's whoever's gonna walk out there, whatever color it is, um, that's when it gets scary. So, I'm very excited for the, for the year two coming up and just this 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 team, the culture, and, and the defense. Last question I got for you: Arizona State University is moving to the Big Twelve. How are we feeling? I'm feeling great, man. I'm feeling great. Um, ultimately, I feel like it was a sign because I get to finish where I started. Started off in the Big Twelve at, at Texas, uh, and I was in the Pac-12, and then I made my way back to the uh, Big 12. So uh, it's definitely going to be exciting seeing some seeing some familiar faces, some familiar teams, things like that. But I think that we match up really well uh, with the teams in there. Um, and I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited to see. I'm, I'm riding with my guys 100%, and I'm, I'm, ready, I'm ready to get through the schedule and attack it. We're looking forward to a really fun season. I am excited for the way this team has been built. I'm excited for the transition to the big 12. And I think that this defense is more than up to the challenge. I appreciate you uh, for sitting down with me. Uh, congratulations on the degree. And appreciate it. Appreciate it. yeah. Is there anything you want to promote for yourself before we wrap up here? Um, I would say appreciate y'all for all the fans, you know, everybody that's that's been following me or that's been around, appreciate y'all for sticking it out, you know, for me. It was hard for me. Uh, probably was hard for y'all, too, seeing me not being out there. But uh, this year is going to be a great year, and I'm excited. I, I, I don't want to put – I wouldn't put any words on it or anything because that's how, how special I think it's going to be. So I think it's just going to be something to watch. So y'all stay tuned, and I'll see y'all in August. Sounds good. I appreciate you guys for tuning in and making us your first listen of the day. Wherever you get your podcasts, hit like, subscribe, turn on notifications so you get an update whenever we post new content. Shout out to my everydayers who are here every day, and thanks for making us your first listen of the day. I'll see you guys next time, and until then, you keep it locked right here on Locked on Sun Devils.